Welcome to Physics 110, uh, Introduction to Electronics. My name is Eric Landahl. I'll be your instructor in this course. I'm a physics professor at DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, this is a 10-week college course uh, that heavily uses the textbook Make Electronics, Second Edition by Charles Platt. It's a course which serves as a general introduction to electronics understanding, both the components as well as techniques. Um, if you consider uh, all of the different electronics classes are out there today. Some have fallen in the category of being hobbyist electronics classes, which teach you how to build something. Others, on the other hand, are electrical engineering classes designed to teach you the best of becoming an electrical engineer. This course, Physics 110, falls fully in the middle. And it's a really great course for a student who wants to learn by doing, or as I sometimes say, thinking with your hands, or thinking while working with your hands. We build a lot of projects uh, in Physics 110, uh, as you do in most electronics courses, that includes an alarm system, a music synthesizer, um, a motor controller system, uh, such as you might use in robotics, such as for digital manufacturing, um, or for building a drone. We also teach you how to implement sensors into electrical systems, for instance, measuring temperature, humidity, light, or the presence of water. For instance, to build a sensor like this floor blinker that tells you when to water your plants. Learning outcomes for this course are basically into four categories. Um, the first is that by the end of this class, students should be able to use standard representations such as circuit diagrams and also mathematical expressions uh, to describe circuits, communicate them to others, and adapt designs that you might find line, online or otherwise. The second is to physical models uh, for describing electrons. These would include the water flow mo model of electrical flow in circuits, uh, the charge model that have separated positive and negative charges, and the quantum mechanical model. Um, and these help you describe circuits, understand the components, and also appreciate the limits and opportunities in the field of electronics. Third, uh, we'll be practicing appliance, following, applying the scientific process in this class, by building apparatus, measuring their performance, analyzing results, and very importantly, we'll learn properly troubleshooting a system so we can test hypotheses about how things work, practice the process of iterative design, and improve our understanding uh, of the world using the scientific method. This, of course, requires using lots of tools, multimeters, breadboards, and soldering among them. Finally, um, by the end of this course, you should be able to use the skills and knowledge you have gained to design new things, more complex systems, such as this automatic robot in my laboratory for making electrical circuits automatically, uh, and confidently tinker uh, with new designs. What's the time commitment for this class? Well, it sort of has five components. One of them are these videos on the YouTube channel and the accompanying textbook by Charles Platt. It provides explanations, concepts, demonstrations, tutorials, example designs, um, practical approaches to building, and how to test, again, troubleshoot uh, your projects, as well as some of the links to external resources. The most important component of the class, of course, is building things yourself troubleshooting them, testing them, and then also tinkering and adapting them to new things. There's a component of online homework and also a laboratory notebook and writing exercise requirement. Finally, there's some discussion boards to help you. All told, the typical student spends about five hours a week on this class, about an hour on the video and text, half an hour each on the online homework and documentation, and three hours uh, in laboratory. A couple of disclaimers, I'm distributing these lectures freely available online or Creative Commons BY 4.0 license. No college credit is given other than for students registered in the course. This does not constitute professional instruction. And finally, I, nor DePaul University, take any liability